Hey everyone, Pastor Adam here for uh, this week's edition of our midweek reflection and prayer. This past Sunday, we concluded our Lenten series rooted in the statement, I've been meaning to ask. And each week we asked a basic question. We started the series several weeks ago with a simple question we all can answer, where are you from? Of course, we know on the surface that has a simple answer, and there are answers we can all contribute to. But yeah, of course, is in any conversation, you start with that basic question, and you go deeper as you have that conversation together. As we've continued in this season of Lent, being a season of restoration. Amid all of our individual spiritual practices, whether you have fasted from something, abstained from something, or increased something, like spirit, uh, scripture and prayer, as a community, we focused on restoration. It's what God does for us through Jesus Christ, and of course, what we are trusted to do for one another. And so as we live in a time where it's tough to have those healthy conversations and strong relationships, especially when we're so different and have different views and are told if we have different views, we're supposed to be apart and not together, and yet Scripture reminds us we are one body. And so we finished our series this past Sunday with a part two of where do we go from here. And ultimately, at the end of this series, I invited everyone to think of, you could just go back to nothing. You don't have to do anything. This is all free will. We have the choice. We don't have to be changed. We maybe can have thought about this series being something intriguing, something a little new and different, but go back to life as normal. Of course, invite you all, as we heard in the recent weeks about the story of Ruth and the story of Peter, they chose to change, to respond to someone else's need. Whether Ruth did it by her action or Peter did it by just changing how he thinks of someone else. And so we finished this series this past Sunday from the Gospel of John. We talked about what do we do next? Where do we go from here? And hopefully you at least think about others differently or you even respond differently to someone in need. Even as we heard this past Sunday in the Gospel of John, even sometimes how you do something or what you do, how you think of someone differently, Maybe there might be others around you saying, hey, that seems a little silly, seems a little much. And that's what we hear from the Gospel of John today. And so we heard this from this past Sunday as well. Uh, Jesus has already um, been, he just raised Lazarus from the dead. And because of that, the spiritual leaders, the scribes and Pharisees, are already plotting against Jesus. And so, six days before the Passover, this is from John chapter 12, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Then they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with Jesus. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped him with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the many money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. So much in this scripture, but this past Sunday we talked about what do we do next? Where do we go from here? And, of course, Judas Iscariot, the writer of John, makes it very clear. He was a thief. He had un, um, unpure motives for the money. He was stealing from the treasury, which was kind of the general purse, kind of what the temple used to care for widows. That's uh, where we hear other in the Gospels, that the widow you know, put her final two coins into the treasury, and the scribes and Pharisees made a big deal out of putting just a little extra. That's that treasury is what the temple or what the community used to help widows. And so it is a thing, of course, Judas was stealing from us. So his motives in general are, are not good. But that statement of, hey, why are you doing all this? That costs a lot of work, of time. That's a year's worth of income. Why are you using it on someone's feet? That statement in and of itself. We know Judas is saying it because of bad motives for sure. But we might have that response. Others might have that response of, hold on a second, pump the brakes, that's a little too much. You know, look at how much work that took for us to come up with that or to achieve whatever the thing may be. But Mary extravagantly 
pours out all this perfume. It just fills a, a fragrance throughout the whole house. It isn't just filling up the room. But Mary acts in courage. Remember, this is a time that women and men in um, Jesus' time did not uh, interact. Like, you interacted with people within your family, and that was it. I mean, it's not all that uncommon to parts of the Middle East even today. And so, that's the first thing, right? Mary and Jesus, you know, weren't really supposed to interact, period, right? Women are supposed to eat in a different part of the room, men eat in a different part of the room. And yet, so, Mary goes in, she's listening to him like she had before, and then she uses all this costly perfume, fragrant perfume on Jesus' feet, and then even more intimately dries her feet, his feet with her hair. And so, as we think about where do we go from here, what do we do next when this whole series has been inviting us to be more thoughtful, not only about how God restores our relationships and restores us, but to be equally thoughtful about how God trusts us to do that same work, to restore relationships. I mean, what would it look like if our relationships with all politicians in like Columbus or here in Dayton or in D.C. were restored? I mean, what would that look like? Maybe you can think of an own relationship in your life or someone you know, a family member, a friend, that you wish that relationship was restored. Certainly we know it takes open conversations, as we've said over the coming week, previous weeks. It takes courage to ask the question, just to start the breath and say, Hey, I've been meaning to ask. How have you been doing? How's your mom? How's this? Do you need anything? Where does it hurt? It takes that same amount of courage, of course, to answer the question. We all have struggles and celebrations, a story worth telling. But if you're a person asking those questions, it takes courage to ask, and it takes just as much courage to stick around and listen. So like Mary, may we be reminded that at the heart of faith, as we continue to be reminded that God restores us in all of humanity, that we get to be a part of that restoration in the world. We get to be a part of restoring broken relationships and restoring where there's grief, transforming it into hope. But the reality is, it isn't going to come easily. It's going to take a lot of courage, just like Mary. And some people might say, hold on, that's a little too much. But Jesus says, hey, leave her alone. She knows what she's doing. She, of course, was preparing Jesus for his burial, as he said. We're not preparing for burial, but rather we respond in response in preparation for new life as even in the season of lent god continues to do a new thing let us pray good and gracious god we continue to give you thanks for this gift of technology able to keep us not only connected in a variety of places but is able for us to have a sense of togetherness that we can gather around prayer and speaking to we can gather around your gift of scripture from a variety of places, no matter where we are in the midst of our busy week, that we can pause, we can be united by your gift of Scripture and your faithfulness in hearing us as we pray. As we spent the previous weeks thinking of the ways we can be better connected, the ways we can be thoughtful about others, and the ways we can have those good questions leading to great conversations, may you continue to stir up in us questions to not only share our story and our struggles, our needs and our hurts, but also, may we have the courage to ask and check in on others. And may we have the courage to stick around and listen to their answer when we ask how they're doing. What do they need? Where is their hurt? Give us the courage to know you have trusted us to do that restoring work, that healing work, that helping work. And so we pray tonight for those we know in need of healing. For those enduring health conditions, whether it be temporary ailments or illnesses, those struggling with chronic conditions such as chronic arthritis, cancers, terminal diseases. We pray for healing for those who are going through physical therapy, vocational therapy, those who are processing traumas through a therapist, emotional healing. We give you thanks for specialists, doctors, therapists, all those who help us recover, rehabilitate, and to heal. We pray for those in need of peace tonight, especially we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, for the many families who grieve the loss of loved ones, for Ukraine and other areas where violence is too common occurrence, where life is lost, where there is hopelessness. May you restore hope. God, we lift up to you now prayers of our own hearts, those we know close to us in need of prayer, for healing, and peace. God, we lift up to you these prayers, thankful that you continue to restore us each day, 
And that even though Mary was lavishly preparing you for your burial, may we lavishly respond to your grace, not in preparation for burial, but in response to new life, even in this season of Lent that leads us to the cross. We know that your grace does not stop there. It continues to that empty tomb. So may we continue that journey knowing we're never alone. You've given us one another, relationships, and you've given us your very Holy Spirit to be with us. We pray all this in your name. Amen. So friends, uh, this of course will be our last uh, regular midweek reflection for this Lenten season. This coming Sunday will mark Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. So we'll continue with our regular worship schedule, worship a traditional service at 8.30, modern praise service at 11. We will not have 9.45 uh, opportunities for faith formation this Sunday. However, at both worship services, we will provide the opportunity for anointing. Uh, as in the history of the church, it has been marked as uh, anointing has been used for setting apart, for healing, for sealing a promise. And so we do that in preparation for this week-long journey. This coming Sunday, Palm Sunday, and then of course we'll have Holy, what some will think of as Monday, Thursday. We'll have a 6 o'clock gathering with hors d'oeuvres, and then at 6.30 we'll begin our prayer stations. And then we'll conclude at the end with an entire community, us gathering for specific prayer and a special way to receive Holy Communion. Then we'll have a Good Friday service and a midweek prayer, including also then a 6.30 evening service on Good Friday. And of course, Resurrection Easter Sunday, our two worship opportunities. And in between at 9.45, we won't have faith formation, but we will have a grab-and-go, simple way you can grab some food uh, in the middle of your morning as we celebrate uh, Jesus' victory over death for us. So plenty of things next week in Holy Week. And if you're not able to join us in person, know we will provide additional um, online reflections um, throughout those several days of Holy Week. So we won't have a midweek uh, specifically. We'll have a little bit of um, introduction to each of those days as we begin Holy Week next week, seeing just how far God will go in love for us. In the meantime, friends, we're always thankful that um, you're able to check in to these videos so we know when you watch them as an exercise of faithfulness. That certainly inspires me and all of us here, knowing we journey together. So friends, know God is with you. God loves you. Take care.